Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how you can create custom morph packs and save them for later use. Morphs are what allow you to customize the shape of your character's face and body. In the Morph tab there are hundreds of morph sliders which you can manipulate to alter various parts of your character's body, both large and small. You can combine various sliders to create different looks, and if you double click on the slider name it will reset back to zero. Let's get started by creating our first custom pack. To do so, just make sure you're in the Custom section and right click to bring up the Create Pack option. We'll name the current pack and then continue on to create our first Morph Slider preset. To do so, first go up to Create and open the Morph Slider Editor. We'll name our pack Johnson. It's important to take note of the Morph Slider path here, which is where the Morph Slider is located in the Morph Hierarchy. In this case, it's in the Body folder which means that this slider preset will change all parts of the body together. The source morph will be the default morph in this case, which is the neutral one, and the target morph will be what we currently have on the screen. Here you can add an image file for the thumbnail as well, so let's do that and press OK to continue on. Once it's finished processing, you'll see the morph template listed in the Smart Gallery. To find the new morph slider with the thumbnail, you can search for it in the Morph tab and a cool new feature is that you can also double click on the Morph preset in the Smart Gallery, which will bring it up in the Morph tab. You can see the effects of our morph if we adjust the slider while another character is on the screen. The best way to do this is to make sure you have a neutral base first. You can do this by going to the Attributes tab and clicking on Load Neutral Base. Be sure to keep in mind that the default morph in Morph Slider Editor is the neutral base character. Let's move on to create a second morph. This time, the character has been exported and customized using advanced sculpting tools like ZBrush, as you can see here. This is the new morph we're going to use. In this case, since we exported the current morph and used it as a source to customize our stronger body, we want to make sure that we select this as the source morph. For the target morph, we'll need to find the OBJ for our stronger character. This will automatically populate the checksum file path. One thing to note here is that if your character's morph shape is drastically different from the source morph, you may want to select the Adjust Bones to Fit Morph. Once you're all set, just load in the thumbnail and you're good to go. The Johnson Strong Slider preset will appear in the Smart Gallery and we can double click it to bring up the slider to test out the values. Once you're satisfied, you can then go about capturing a thumbnail for the morph preset in the Smart Gallery. To do this, simply take the camera to a suitable position, right click on the morph preset and select Capture Thumbnail. You can do this as many times as you want to get the right look. We can take the Johnson Strong Slider down to zero and then repeat the process for the regular Johnson Slider. You can see I've added various custom morphs for the chest and arms in addition to full body. What I've done is just repeat the process with different slider paths and different body parts separately. If I double click on each preset, it will bring up the respective slider, which I can then manipulate to show the effect. Note that they are all focused on different specific parts of the body. Generally, you'll want your thumbnails to reflect this just to make for a clear reference. To better organize your morphs into different parts of the body, you may want to create specific subfolders. To do this, you can click on the little plus symbol beside the morph folder in your pack. We'll do this for the chest. Once you've created that folder, you can multi-select all of the morph presets you want to add to it and then right click and select move to subfolder. Then select the chest subfolder. You'll see that those morph presets will now be moved to that folder. We can repeat the process for the two arm and shoulder sliders and finally again for the full body presets. Be sure to name each one clearly so it's easier to access later on. Next, let's look at saving an avatar preset. An avatar preset will save all of the currently used morphs as well as their values. Say for example we wanted to have a body type that was somewhere between Skinny Johnson and Strong Johnson. I'll start off by choosing a couple of these presets and modifying the morph slider value in each. Once we're done, I think we have a rather strapping young fellow and we can see the morphs being used in this body if we go up to the currently used item under the morph tab. In order to save this avatar preset, we need to go down and click Save at the bottom of the Smart Gallery. From there, let's select Full Body Morph and Skin, 
which will save all the morphs together, as well as the skin appearance of our character. We'll call this one inverted triangle to describe his body type. Once it saves, you won't find it in your main morphs folder, but rather in a separately created folder for morphs and skins combined. We can zoom in and capture another thumbnail that focuses more on the body shape. You'll also notice that all of the use sliders are still there, along with the exact same values we input before. We can then go ahead and modify this avatar preset to make the chest smaller using the respective sliders, and save it as another preset that's more focused on the arms. When you apply these presets to another character model, you can choose to apply them morph only or also apply with the saved materials. If I apply our recently saved avatar preset focused on the arms here, but deselect the materials option, you'll see that the character's skin won't change, and he'll still have no hair on his chest and maintain the original skin tone. If we apply the strongman preset and choose to apply the materials too, we'll go back to the different skin tone and slightly hairy chest. Another thing we can do to make our content more organized is to add metadata. This allows us to change a pack's thumbnail, content category, and subfolder. To do that, let's go back to find our strongman custom pack in the main folder and then right click and select Edit Metadata. Here we can see all of the content categories as well as the subfolders for each item in the pack. We can add a thumbnail for the entire pack here as well. Lastly, I can also change the pack name here and add a description. In this case, I'll just keep it simple and use the pack name as a filler here. Next, let's take a look at how to upload your custom morph pack. As with a lot of other things we've done, the upload option is available by right clicking on the main pack folder and selecting Upload Pack. This will allow us to upload the pack to our developer section where we can then later publish it to the marketplace for sale to other users. In the upload window, you'll see all of the items that will be uploaded. Since all of the sliders are included in this pack, you shouldn't have any problems with the upload, so let's go ahead and get started. Once it's finished, let's switch over to the developer node in order to simulate what other users will see once they purchase this pack. Make sure to refresh the smart gallery in order to see the pack we just uploaded appear. You can check the content in the developer node here and double click to install it. Once everything's finished, then you can go through all the folders and morph presets in the developer node to check that everything is working as normal. That's really about all there is to creating your own custom morph packs and avatar presets, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, be sure to check out our other Smart Gallery tutorials, as well as our forum at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.